In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the CRT scan lines template from my website. I've covered this effect in many a tutorial now, and I've even shown how to make this exact After Effects project. But after I made the tutorial and posted about it a bunch, more than one person asked me to just make a template because they couldn't get it working or whatever. So a couple of months ago, I did make the template, but then I was ill and I didn't make this video then. So I'm just like catching up. But this is the template in question on screen now from my website in the After Effects templates category. I'm going to show you how this works, how to edit it and how to put your own image in and everything like that. So once you've got the template, this is the zip file you will get from my website. Put it wherever you want it on your computer. Ideally unzip it where you want to keep it because there are a few assets that are going to be extracted when you unzip this file. So I'm just going to unzip mine now but put yours where you want it. So once extracted, it's all in this folder and you'll see there is a footage folder, a backwards compatible folder, demo image credit folder. The actual file is here and then there are two little TXT files. If you're watching this video, you don't need to read these files, but if you're gonna skip any part of this video or if you need a reminder in the future, just consult these two TXT files here. So before you open the After Effects file, it's important to make sure that you've not renamed or moved anything that is in this footage folder. So After Effects projects are asset dependent, which means that this project file is gonna locate things that are in this footage folder that are required to generate the effect. If you rename this, it'll break. So so don't rename it and open your After Effects project. I'm going to rename it now just to show you what to do if you did already rename it or if you break it in the future. I'm just going to add test onto the end. So as you can see, because I renamed mine, I get this error message, but I'm going to show you how to fix it now. So this little graphic here just means that After Effects knows what to do with something, but it just doesn't know where that something is. So if you look here on the left to this project tab, you'll see one of the assets that's missing is the demo image. And then there's probably some more missing in here in the lines folder. If you can't see the project tab, just go to window and make sure you have got project ticked down here and that'll come up. So to locate these, just double click on any one of them. So I'm going to double click on vertical lines. And then if you just navigate to wherever it is, you saved the files from my site and click on whatever you broke. If you renamed the footage folder or if you just moved it, just navigate into the footage folder, locate the file it's asking you for. So I double click vertical lines. So I'm just going to click on vertical lines, click import, and it will find the rest of them because you've let it know. It's discovered what I broke basically. So now the project file will work fine. If you didn't rename it, this is what you will have seen when you first open the project. Now, just for this video, it's quite hard for me to show you the details in this animation, in this effect and like effectively show you all that controls. So I'll try to stay zoomed in as much as I can, um, but just bear with me for if things start looking like zoomed out and stuff. But this effect is made up of seven comps or compositions. And in each of these compositions, you are gonna be able to edit different parts of the effect. So the end of the effect is the output comp. The start of the effect is the input comp. So I'm gonna start in the input comp. And as you can see, we've got the demo image already in there and you can add your own images into here just by drag and drop. Any image format, PNG or JPEG or whatever you want can go here. But for this video, I'm going to stick with the demo artwork that's already in there just so I can focus on how to change the effect for you. So I'm going to leave mine the same. Totally up to you if you want to leave the particles on or not. I'll turn them off for now. And up at the top here where it says composition, you'll see we've got our input slash insert image. And it's telling us that this goes into the displacement map, but the input actually goes into more than one of the other compositions. So if you click on this little arrow here, it'll show you the flow chart and the input goes into the output, the effect mask and the displacement map. So next I'm going to go into the effect mask comp just by clicking it. And again, this is going to be one of the times where it's quite hard for me to show you the controls and the detail at the same time. So if we come down to our timeline here, at the top of the list, we've got threshold. Now, if you can't see the effect controls, just go to window and make sure you've got effect controls ticked and you'll get this little window here. So the only thing you need to bear in mind here is when you're adjusting the threshold, areas in white will show up in the output as a line or it will try to render it as a line. Obviously, if you go all white, it's going to be very hard and areas in black will remain black in the output. So that's like the top level control for the effect mask. 
You can also edit curves in here if you want a little bit like finer control over the black and white areas. So you can add a little bit more contrast with the curves. We've also got a fractal noise pattern in this just to add a little bit of like animation to the effect mask. I'll explain what is meant by effect mask when we're out of this comp. But as you can see with the fractal pattern overlay, if I just move the playhead around a little bit, you'll see the threshold is like dancing. Basically, it's just moving around. If you want to make changes to that, you can change the fractal type, the noise type, the contrast. Although, as I said, I won't go too far with anything that overdoes the white because then it's not going to look that good in the end. But you can change the brightness, anything you want, really. This is all editable. You don't even have to have that turned on as well. You can turn that off if you want. There's an optional effect below called Super Noisy Lines. This is just going to add some noise to our effect mask. So again, whenever you're working with these effects, just bear in mind that areas that you end up leaving white will appear in the end result. So if we go now into the output comp, you'll see the effects mask here. It's the one, two, three, four, fifth one up. And this is just set to darken blend mode. So basically anything that's white in the effects mask comp is not considered in the output because we're only taking the pixels that are darker than what is below the effects mask. So whatever you do in the effects mask comp, just don't turn the threshold off because that'll disrupt that. And if we go now without the threshold on, you'll see that it's just applying it to the whole image. Um, and that's not what we want. So that covers the effects mask comp. So if we go back to the input and go back to the flow chart, the input is also going into a displacement map comp. So if we open up the displacement map comp, you've got a blur and a contrast control. So more blur and more contrast will result in smoother lines in your output. I'll just show you now, if I just reduce the blurriness to zero and go back to the output, you'll see that the lines that do exist are like super jagged or they're not very um, not very smooth. And then the rest of it is just really noisy. If I turn the blurriness all the way up, you'll see now that the lines are only just really conforming to the shape of this statue we've got. Now, what I'm noticing here in my output is that there is a bit much background stuff going on for me. So to get rid of that, so if I've just got the statue in mind, I'm going to go back into the effects mask. I'm going to turn off super noisy lines and I'm just going to tweak the threshold a little bit. Now, it's important to mention here that some images, when you put them in the effects mask, you might want to invert the black. So you can make a new adjustment layer and add an invert in the effects and presets if you want. You can add other effects to this if you want, as long as you're adhering to the black and white rule, basically. For me, I'm going to try and simplify this a little bit just so that I've got a clearer shape coming through for my statue. So the shape is a little bit clearer now for me. And all I want to do is just reduce the blurriness in this displacement map so that some of these lines will conform to the shape of the eye and the hands and stuff like that. Some of the finer details, basically. So back in displacement map, if I just turn the blurriness down and go back to my output, you'll see it starts picking up more and more of the shape. Can also reduce the contrast or up the brightness and you'll continue to get varying amounts of detail based on what you change. The only thing you really need to bear in mind when you're editing the displacement map is the lower the clarity of your displacement map, whether that be through blurriness or the brightness and contrast, the less clarity you have, the smoother your lines will be. If you have more clarity, less blur and, you know, a more uneven contrast, essentially the closer you get back to this input, the messier your lines will be. So obviously, depending on what effect you're going for, it's totally up to you what you do there, but just bear in mind that those are the controls for the displacement map. Now, looking at our output, we've also got effects mask, which we've done. We've got clarity control, which is the displacement map, which we've done. We've done our insert input image. So all we've got left is line control and our glitch effect source fractal. So I'm going to go to line control next, which is the line frequency control tab. And it is literally just lines. So these lines are set up here. They are then displaced by this displacement map and the result of that displacement is then masked by our effect mask. So nothing you really do here can disrupt the shape of your output, but you can change the angle or the frequency. When I say frequency, I mean the space between your lines or the direction of the lines and things like that. So if we go into the line frequency control, you've got 
definition control, wave animation, and transform controls. So straight away, if I just go into transform controls and change the rotation to 90 and come back to my output, you'll see that it's flipped. So our change has worked to the lines, but we've lost our displacement. All you need to do is come up to your lines control and you'll see here you've got a displacement map on the lines control in the output comp. And then literally just change the horizontal displacement. So I'm just going to click on that and copy the 329, change that to zero, and then paste it into the vertical displacement. Displacement will sync up to your new line direction. To be honest, you can just have a value in both of them. But if you, if you look, it will affect the borders a little bit. So if I just change that back to zero, you'll see that the borders go back. If you come back into the line frequency control and you want to have something like more angular so if i change this to 45 and come back to the output at that point it can look cool to combine both horizontal and vertical displacement or you can just go for one it's totally up to you but just make sure your line frequency control when you change the rotation just make sure you sync that up to the actual displacement in the output otherwise you'll end up with straight lines so i'm going to tilt mine a little bit and then just up the displacement a little bit on mine you can then come down to the definition control in the line control comp and you can adjust this threshold so again if you go all the way white you've erased the lines now so if we look in the output now it's just a mess it's just a blob and if you go too thin the lines will disappear and be black and you'll just have nothing in your output so the threshold is there to help you adjust the thickness of the lines. So if I thin mine a little bit to here and go back to my output, it's not that noticeable because of the glows and stuff that are in this output, but you can control like the definition of the lines here. Again, there's a mini max here. So if you change the mini max to zero, so it's not doing anything, that'll thin the lines a bit more. But again, because of the effects that we're building up here, um, the lines can only be so thin before the glow is just going to like beef them up. So yeah, you can, um, you can customize that as much as you want. You'll notice in the line frequency control, there is a lines comp. Um, so these are just two assets that I generated. And if you want to swap between these two, you can. So this will just swap them to horizontal and that'll mess with your line controls and then therefore mess with your output. But as long as you have one of them selected in the lines, then it'll work fine. So we've covered the effects mask, the line controls, the clarity controls, and the input. So the only other thing here is the glitch effect source fractal. So when I say glitch effect, you'll notice that there's some displacement going on on top of the lines. It's kind of subtle in this one because I've turned off the particles. So if I go back into the input, turn on the particles now, come into the output, you can notice it a little bit more. But this adjustment layer here, which is adjustment layer number eight, that says glitch effect, it is just a displacement map, which is hooked up to the glitch effect source fractal. And if you come in here, this is just a displacement map that is fully editable if you want to. It's just some more fractal noise. So you can make changes to this as much as you like. I've just broke it though. It's literally only there to hook up to the glitch effect. So if you click on the glitch effect, you can actually scale it up or down, or you can move it around. Um, it's set up to jump around anyway. So if you wanted to, you can, you know, create a little square here and then use control D to duplicate the glitch effect and then move it somewhere else. And those will animate on their own. Like you don't have to do the animation yourself. You can duplicate those as many times as you want and edit the source as much as you want. You can even put a different source in here. So if you've got displacement maps that you downloaded from my website or somewhere else, I know I did some free displacement maps not that long ago, so you, maybe you've got those. You can put those in here and it will link up like seamlessly. You won't need to do anything. The rest of the effects in the output are pretty much self-explanatory. Um, you've got a noise, wave warp. These are all just like contributing factors. Really by this point, if we turn all these off, You've got the output and it just needs like some glow and some hue add into it. But this is the output. This is really the work that's been done by all the comps. And then from here, you could literally delete all these effects if you wanted to um, or edit them as much as you want or yeah, whatever you want to do, really. There's an adjustment layer that I forgot I added called rave mode, which is literally just going to spam like flicking through different colors. If I just play that now. It's not quite as fast as I thought it would be, but yeah, you can uh, you can delete that if you want. Obviously, you've got a hue control on the third adjustment layer, so you can change the base color if you want to. Curves, so you can 
make it loads brighter if you need it loads brighter or you can have it a little, little bit more subtle if you want you'll notice i've got these angular gaps in my lines now because i turned the angular gaps layer on and it's literally just a venetian blinds and an unsharp mask and then the rest of it is really just glow effects so as i said at the start this will all sync up if you add your own image in so let me just see if i can find anything that might work with this so if i put this image in fill it down a little bit turn off the particles for now and then go into the effect mask just adjust it for the image and then adjust my clarity in the displacement map. You'll see that she starts coming through uh, this woman in like the veil thing. I just picked that at random. So obviously like it'll work with any image. Um, I don't have tons of time to like get it working for like exactly what I would want from this picture. So yeah, it's really just about finding the sweet spot for whatever image you're putting into this. Um, there is no one sweet spot because obviously all images are different, but once you like familiarize yourself with the controls and the terminology and stuff and what's actually happening, um, you can get some cool results out of it. So same process for this image. I'm just going to adjust the effects mask. Obviously, if I had time, maybe I would go into Photoshop and just mask out these hands, but I don't have time to do that in this video. Displacement map is probably fine for that. And then I'm just going to change the hue and the curves. And if at any point you've messed it up and you get stuck or you just want to reset to the defaults, you can just go file and revert. Bear in mind, if you've not saved, it will delete all your changes and it will unimport your images and stuff. But if you want to just start fresh, if you feel like you've messed up your image, you can just go revert, press yes. And because at the start of the video, I renamed that folder, it's re-reverted to when it didn't know where they were. Um, but for you, if you don't do that, it won't do that for you. So if you grab this template, thank you. I really appreciate you. But as I said, I've covered this effect and we'll probably cover it again at some point in the future. So if you're just here out of curiosity and you want to learn a bit more about this, as I said, I would recommend the other videos as well. If you've got the template, any updates I add to this in the future are yours for free in your emails. I've not updated it so far, but I might one day in the future. So keep an eye out for that. Like I said before, I'm just catching up now on making these tutorials that I should have made. Um, so I'm sorry if you were waiting for this and I will get back to making the tutorials and the free resources very soon. Uh, I've just been ill, so I had to get to these first. But yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.